Well, hello everybody. In this short video, I would like to take a few minutes and just extend the simple form of the pigeonhole principle to be applicable to a slightly more general situation. On the board behind me, I have reminded you about that simple form. The simple form of the pigeonhole principle is not much more than just common sense, which says that if you have n plus one objects to be placed in n boxes, then at least one of those boxes would have to have at least two objects in it. It's just the pigeonhole principle in the very simplest possible form. <clears throat> now, in an earlier video, I talked about an extended version of this principle. Let's suppose I was hoping to conclude that there was a box that has at least R objects in it. In that situation, we need a slightly tweaked version of the pigeonhole principle. Namely, we would have to assume that we have n times the quantity r minus 1 plus 1 objects. The idea behind that is, well, imagine that every box has exactly r minus 1 objects in it. Playing worst case scenario here, in order to delay for as long as possible having a box with r objects in it, you could have at most R minus one objects in each of your N boxes. <laughs> and that would be N times R minus one objects. But as soon as you have even one more object than that, which is where this plus one is coming from, now you can be sure. Even in a worst case scenario, we are now guaranteed that there are at least R objects in one of the boxes. <clears throat> so, I want to actually take it a step further and generalize this principle, pigeonhole principle, a little bit further to where we aren't necessarily um, looking for the same number of objects, depending on which box it is. So let me set it up this way. This is uh, what I will call the pigeonhole principle in what is called, I'll call this the strong form of the pigeonhole principle. So actually the extended version uh, of the pigeonhole principle is really a special case of the strong form. So this is, this is what the strong form says. Let's take a collection of integers here, Q1, Q2, up to Qn. And I want these to all be positive integers. <laughs> so we take a collection of positive integers like that. And then if we have the following number, and this is going to look a little messy to begin with, but it will make complete sense once we write the whole thing down. I'm going to add up all n of those numbers, but then I'm going to subtract n and then add 1, <laughs> okay? So if that many objects are placed in n boxes. So again, we have n boxes, but the number of objects that are being placed in those boxes is this kind of weird looking expression here. I will point out that since the Qs are all positive integers, this number is a positive number, right? Because each of the Qs is at least one and you've got n of those. So even after subtracting n, you'll still have um, you know, at least zero out of that. And then you have a plus one here. So it does become a positive expression. This is a positive number of objects being placed in N boxes. Then for some I, which is really just saying for some box, for some I, the I box contains at least Q sub I objects. Okay, so, you know, we're not specifying that it's gotta be R objects, right? There's no, there's no single value R this time. There's a Q1, a Q2, a Q3. Each box has maybe a, a different threshold that we are looking for. So this is the strong form of uh, the pigeonhole. Um, principle. The i-box contains, so 
sorry, I did not write this correctly. Uh, it contains at least, is what I meant to say, at least, not at all, at least Q sub i objects. There we go. Now I think I have it right. For some i, the i box contains at least Q sub i objects here. Feel free to pause if you need a moment to write this down or digest a, a little bit. But that's uh, that's the idea. Okay. Now I will just note that if all of the cues, so this is a remark here, maybe we'll start with this little observation. If all of the cues are just equal to R, so if Q1 equals Q2 is equal to dot 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 is equal to QN is equal to R. Well, then what you actually have over here is R plus R plus R N times. This is actually N R minus N plus one, which is actually this number, N R minus N plus one. And the conclusion would be that for some box, there are at least R objects in that box. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that if all of the Qs are equal to R, we recover the extended version above. The extended version of our pigeonhole principle is the one here in the middle, right? This is the extended version. And in fact, if R is equal to two specifically, we recover the original simple form of the pigeonhole principle. So this strong form actually does include all of the earlier versions that we've looked at. This one, however, allows these cues to take on various different values that could all be different from each other. Okay. Let's try to write down the, the proof of this strong form of the pigeonhole principle. It is done very much like the simple form was proven, namely by way of contradiction. So for the proof of the strong form, by contradiction, what I'm going to assume, by way of contradiction here, guys, by way of contradiction, I'm going to assume that every box fails to have, you know, enough objects in it. So what are we trying to conclude here? We're trying to conclude that there exists a box with at least Q sub I objects. So by way of contradiction, let's actually assume that there is no such box. Let's assume that for all I, right? For all I, the I box has less than Q sub I objects in it. Give this over here so you can read it. By way of contradiction, let's assume that for all i, the i box has at most q sub i objects in it. And so how many objects would we have in that case? Then the total number of objects So we just add up how many objects uh, are in each box, right? Well, the first box has at most Q1 plus one objects. The second box has at most Q2 plus one objects. I'm uh, sorry, uh, this should be minus one, minus one, and so on, dot, dot, dot. The last box, the nth box has at most Qn minus one objects in it. And if you add all of that up, that's well, Q1 plus Q2 plus dot, 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 plus Qn minus N objects. The total number of objects is less than Q sub N, Q sub one plus Q sub two plus dot, 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 with a minus N on the end of it. But we have more objects than that, right? 
we are assuming that we have one more object than that. Okay. And so that's where the contradiction uh, is going to be coming from. By the way, this is a slight typo in my proof here. This should be the number of objects is at most. It could actually be equal to this because each box could just fall one object short of its Q sub I threshold. But still, when you add up that number, you get a result that is less than the number of objects assumed in the principle. So that is uh, a, a basically a simple proof by way of contradiction for this strong form of the pigeonhole principle. Let's take a moment and write down an example to illustrate this pigeonhole principle. Come over here and let's try and do a quick example together. How we could use the strong form to solve a problem. How many poker cards must be drawn to ensure that you are getting, to ensure getting at least five spades, five spades, at least two hearts, at least seven clubs, or at least 10 diamonds. Okay. So this is a standard deck of playing cards that we're talking about. And we would like to know each card is an object, right? We would like to draw cards and the cards can then be placed into a box. You might uh, imagine already what the boxes are. The boxes are just going to be the spades, the hearts, the clubs, and the diamonds. And so as we draw cards, we simply put them into the box according to what suit those cards are from. And so the question is, how many cards do we have to draw to make sure that we get at least five spades, at least two hearts, at least seven clubs, or at least 10 diamonds? Okay, so we would like to apply the strong form of the pigeonhole principle over here. And the cues, these positive integers, are going to actually be the numbers that we are given in this problem over here. In other words, uh, Q1 is going to be five, Q2 is going to be two, Q3 is going to be seven, and Q4 is going to be 10. And in this case, of course, we see that N is equal to four. That's always representing the number of boxes that we have. And so coming back over here again, just to double check what, what the setup is, we have all of those positive integers, Q, one, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And then uh, we're going to create this number of objects. And if we place them into the four boxes, then at least one of the boxes will have at least as many objects as we were required to produce. So let's just take a look at this. So by the strong form, by the strong form of the pigeonhole principle. We need uh, how many cards? Well, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4, that would be five plus two plus seven plus 10. And then we have to subtract N, which is four, and then add one. Let's check this out. 24 minus 4 is 20. Add 1. It's 21 cards. Pretty simple, right? 
again, guys, we actually could just reason this a little bit from common sense as well. You could say, sort of play devil's advocate. What's the worst case scenario? We're supposed to get at least five spades, at least two hearts, at least seven clubs, or at least 10 diamonds. What if we didn't get any of those things? How long could we hold out not getting at least one of those four things to happen? Well, I could get four spades. I could get just one heart. I could get six clubs and I could get nine diamonds. Yeah. So that's four plus one plus six plus five. That's 20. That's as long as we can hold out drawing cards without getting the required minimum threshold, at least in one of my boxes. So if we add just one more card to the total of 20 that we already got, that would be 21 cards. That's what we would have to have, okay? So this is just, again, a stronger version of the same pigeonhole principle that we've been learning about previously, along with a nice example uh, to illustrate it. Again, from that strong version, we can derive the earlier extended version and the simple form from the very beginning as well. It's all tied together here. I hope that these examples and ideas behind the pigeonhole principle have made sense to you so far. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to me and let me know. But I wanna thank you for your time, for watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye for now.